How to use the extreme demand avoidance questionnaire to understand if your child or a client of yours is pathologically demand avoidant. Okay, so I've worked with hundreds of families and we always use this um, research tool. It's not a diagnostic tool. It's the closest thing we have to it to help them understand where their child fits on a distribution of cases. But parents get stuck because they don't understand what the questions are actually asking. Okay, so I want to help you as a parent filling this out or a therapist who's working with this tool to understand where parents get stuck. Okay, first, the first question, obsessively resistant avoids ordinary demands and requests. Often parents say, no, that's not true when their child actually is avoiding their requests, but is doing so in a very subtle way. They're not necessarily saying no or running away or being explosive. What they're doing is they're using subtle forms of like, verbal distraction, like talking over their parent, talking about a particular interest or something that they did, like, oh, let me tell you everything about this Pokemon card right as they're leaving the house. Or they're starting to pretend to be an animal using tactics like distraction. So we need to give parents an understanding of those indicators. Second, complaints of illness or physical incapacity. Parents often miss this one, but it's very subtle where children will be like, my foot hurts. My leg don't my legs don't work. My legs hurt. I have a tummy ache, right? And it's actually linked to what they're avoiding or accumulation of stress that can't be tied to a direct demand. 8 and 10 are questions about role play that parents often get confused about as well because their child instead of taking on like superhero characters or Elsa from Frozen, their young children are pretending to be animals like a baby kitty, a baby polar bear, a baby alligator, a baby dog. So look for that as well. And then I'm going to point to the last one, which parents always put not true. And once we unpack it a little bit, it's actually true that the child was passive as an infant because how they're reading this question is well, no, my child wasn't passive. They were screaming all the time, right? Which was how my son was. But what this question is actually asking is like, are they engaging in play organically and reciprocally? Or do you have to sort of improv and entertain them? And when you introduce toys, they don't really know how to interact with them. That's the passivity that this question is getting at and sort of starts to point us towards social communication differences. So I just want to alert you to those questions as a therapist or a parent.